In today's lesson, we are going to be using all of the methods that we have been learning about factoring. And we're going to choose which factoring method would be best with each polynomial that we are trying to factor. So what we're going to do here, this is one of your assignments today, if you recognize this page. We're actually going to be doing set one right here together. I have them on the next several slides. So if you have this paper, go ahead and get it out, and we're going to be doing set one together. When you have that ready, and we're ready to continue, the first problem on it is a squared plus 9a plus 20. So what we're going to do every time, let me see if I can move this out of the way. That down there. Every time we have a polynomial that we are trying to factor, we're going to start with our checklist right now. And the first thing we're always going to do is check to see if there's a greatest common factor in all of the terms. So we have a squared plus 9a plus 20. There is not a greatest common factor. So now we ask ourselves how many terms are left. There are three terms. So we're going to go to three terms right here. And we look at the leading coefficient, which is a invisible 1. So we see that we are going to use reverse FOIL. So remember, reverse FOIL is when you look at the C term, which is 20. You're going to think of factor pairs for 20, like 1 and 20, 2 and 10. Uh, 4 and 5, and you want to find the pair that adds together to get the 9. So obviously that's going to be this pair. So we simply factor it as a plus 4, a plus 5. That was reverse FOIL. And we're finished with that one. That was just a one-step reverse FOIL. Okay, we'll move on to the next problem. Again, we always check to see if there's a greatest common factor on all three terms. We look and see that there is not. Again, we look, and there's three terms, again, with the leading coefficient being a 1. So this was just like the first one, where we're going to use reverse FOIL. This time, we have a negative 24 as the C term. So we think of factor pairs for 24, 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, 4 and 6. And this time, we want them to add together to get a positive 2. So if I use a positive 6, and a negative 4, that's going to multiply to get our negative 24, and it's going to add to get our 2. So we factor it as simply a plus 6 and a minus 4. Reverse FOIL, just find the factor pairs and use that to write your two binomials. Okay, so again, the first step is always to check for the greatest common factor. Is there a greatest common factor for a squared minus 64? There is not. We have two terms left. So we are going to check to see if it is the difference of two perfect squares. Difference means subtraction. We see that it is a subtraction problem. Can we take the square root of a? Yes, that would be a. Can we take the square root of 64? Yes. So that is the difference of two perfect squares. So if you remember, when we factor it, we write it twice, once with an addition sign, once with a plus sign. So in factoring it, that would be a plus 8, a minus 8. And if we were to FOIL this, a times a is a squared, negative a, positive a, and then your negative 64, you will see that these center terms cancel each other out, goodbye, so you're left with a squared minus 64. So we're starting with a binomial and ending up when we're factoring it, with two binomials when it is factored. Okay, and the next one, again, we start with the very first step, check for a greatest common factor, a 5a squared minus a minus 4. There is not a greatest common factor. We see that there are three terms, but the, great, the fleeting coefficient is greater than 1. So you get a 5. So this is where we make four terms. So let's remind you how to make four terms. We're going to keep the first term, 5a squared. We're going to keep the last term, negative 4. But we need to split the negative 1a into two, um, two factors. So remember, we multiply the first term times the last term, which is a negative 20. Where can I write this? I'll write it down here. And we think of factor pairs for negative 20. First, I'm just going to think of the pairs. 
When we add them together, we want a negative 1. So if I make it a negative 5 and a plus 4, this multiplies to get a negative 20 and adds to get the negative 1. So we're going to split the negative 1a into two terms, a uh, 4a and a negative 5a. Because if you were to add negative 4a minus 5a, that would be a negative a. Now we solve by grouping. Make four turns and then solve by grouping. So we look at the first grouping. The greatest common factor is a. What is left is 5a plus 4. In the second grouping, we see that we can factor out a negative 1, and that leaves a positive 5a plus 4. Now we see our answer. a minus 1 is one of our binomials, and 5a plus 4 is our second binomial found right here. So that one we had to solve by grouping by making four terms. That says 5a plus 2. I made a mistake right there when I made my PowerPoint. That's supposed to be a 4. Okay, so let's look at the next one. And this is still on that first page that we were looking at. We look for a greatest common factor in both terms, or all three terms. I was looking here. This is also not supposed to have a parenthesis sign. Is there a greatest common factor for 25a squared plus 20a plus 4? Anything that I can pull out? Can't think of anything. So we have three terms left where the leading coefficient is greater than one, so we need to make four terms again. So we keep the first term, keep the last term, and we need to split the middle term into two terms to make that four terms. So we multiply the first term times the last term. 20 times times 4 is 100. And we think of factor pairs for 100. 1 and 100. 2 and 50, uh, 4 and 20, uh, we've got 5 and, oh, that's 4 and 25, 5 and 20. I'm trying to look up there and look. We're trying to find a 20A. So I'm going to keep going. Do I see a 20A? Oh, not yet. So we keep going. How about 10 and 10? Oh, just found it. 10 and 10 multiply to get 100 and they add to get 20. So we split that into 10a and 10a because 10a plus 10a is 20a and they multiply to get 100. Now we have four terms. So we go back to solve by grouping. So in the first group, our greatest common factor would be 5a. Divide both of those terms by 5a would give us 5a plus 2. Greatest common factor for the second grouping would be a positive 2. And what is left over? 5a plus 2. So here we see our magic happened. So we have 5a plus 2. And on the outside, we have 5a plus 2. Looky there. That was a perfect square trinomial. Okay. Um, in the second sheet that you are assigned today, it looks like this. We are going to look at the first six of them together. By the way, since you're listening to the video, you get to have the hint of the day. If you go back here to the first worksheet that we were working on, we just completed the first five. This last set down here, set four, is going to be bonus. So now that we finish the first set, you only are assigned to do set two and set three by yourself. And as we go to this next, the back side of your paper, or the second sheet of your paper, this one, we're going to work through one through six together. You will be assigned the next two, what I call two sets, even though they're not divided up that way. You're going to be assigned seven through 18. And that means this last six over here is going to be bonus. So if you're watching the video, you'll know which ones are bonus. So you can do these for bonus on both sides. Okay, so now if you want to look at this paper, we're going to do those first six together, walking through them. The first one says n squared plus 11n plus 18. Again, we start with checking for the greatest common factor for all three terms. 
We do not see one, so now we see that there are three terms and the leading coefficient is a 1, so we use our reverse FOIL. So we have 18 and we think of factor pairs for 18, 1 and 18, 2 and 9, 3 and 6, which ones add together to get the 11. I see 2 and 9 that multiply to get 18 and add to get 11, so it's just simply n plus 2, n plus 9. Reverse FOIL. Accomplished pretty quickly. Okay, we're going to look at the second one. Um, check for a greatest common factor. Always first. Check for that greatest common factor. I do not see one. Now we have two terms left. So we're going to check for the difference of two perfect squares. It is the difference. We can take the square root of n squared, which is n. We can take the square root of 81, which is 9. So when we factor it, we write it once with a subtraction sign and once with a plus sign. We are done. That makes it pretty easy. Uh, number three, we have three terms. We check for a greatest common factor. Always do that first. I don't see one. So we're left with three terms with a leading coefficient of one. So we're going to use reverse FOIL again. So we have a negative 18, so we have negative 18, we have 1 and 18, 2, 9, 3, 6. We want to add together to get a negative 3. So I look right here and I see this pair. Multiplies to get a negative 18, adds together again a negative 3, so that would be n plus 3 and n minus 6. We are finished factoring that trinomial. Reverse wheel goes pretty quickly. Okay, on number four, two terms. First, is there something that we can factor out? There is not. We notice that there are two terms left, so we're going to check for the difference of two perfect squares. We can take the square of 49g squared, it would be 7g. We can take the square root of 4, which is 2. It is the difference, so it is the difference of two perfect squares. So we write it once with a subtraction sign and once with an addition sign. And we're done factoring that one. Okay, this takes us to number five. We look for a greatest common factor first. We haven't had one where we've had to factor something out first, but we'll get there. Um, we look and we see that we have three terms left, and the leading coefficient is larger than one, so we're going to make four terms. So, oh, you know what? I noticed something about this. This is a shortcut we learned yesterday. When I think of 49 times 4, I see, wow, that's going to be a really big number I have to find factor pairs for. So that could be a hint that maybe we need to look for a shortcut. Do you remember the perfect square trinomials yesterday? Uh, we can take the square root of the first term, which is 7g. We can take the square root of the second term, which is 2. Multiply them together, which would be 14g. Double it, and look what I get, 28g. So it is the perfect square trinomial, so that's factored right there. We just take that and square it. If not, we would have had to gone 49 times 4. Anytime you see something this large, uh, it's probably going to be a shortcut like a perfect square trinomial. Just a hint to yourself about that. So we use the shortcut there. Otherwise, you have to make the four terms. And the last one we're going to do is 7g squared plus 3g minus 4. Uh, again, you check for the greatest common factor in all three terms, which we do not see one again. We have three terms. The greatest one, the leading coefficient is greater than 1. So we're going to make four terms. So we keep 7g squared. We keep the negative 4. 7 times 4 is a negative 28. So we're thinking of factor pairs for 28, and I just start writing them down here, and I'm looking for something that makes a positive 3. And right here, if I make this pair and I multiply them, I get a negative 28, and when I add them, I get the positive 3. So I'm going to split this into two terms. I think I'm going to put the 7g with the 7g squared, and I'm going to put the negative 4g with the 4. You could do it the other way, but I choose to do it this way. Solve by grouping. We can take out a 7g. That leaves g plus 1. We can factor out, whoops, not ready for that parentheses yet. Or where is that? We know that we want to have a g plus 1 over here because we want to find the magic. 
and we would have to factor out a negative 4. So we see our two answers now. We see 7g minus 4, and we see g plus 1. So this gets you through the first set of both sides of the paper, and I already showed you which ones were going to be bonus. So that leaves you basically what I would call two sets on both sides of the paper. Uh, you may not have room. You may have to get out a sheet of paper and work them on a separate sheet of paper. But I hope that helps get you started. Good luck.